much for your patience. And uh, we'll begin, this is uh, the Department of Public Works in, in an internal audit uh, that was completed um, by um, Mr. Uh, Joseph Freiberger with, and I never can quite get, it's SCNH, SCNH group, so there we go. And thank yes. you. Commissioner Kelly, yes. um, good afternoon, commissioners. I just uh, wanted to take a moment to get, before we get started here, to thank SCNH for um, helping us go through this audit, uh, pointing out some ways that we could improve our management of the fleet operations in the county. We really appreciated their effort, and I'm sure we were, uh, uh, we probably were a little tough on them at first, but I think we got, ended up with a very good um, audit here. And They're uh, supposed to be tough on you. Well, that was, it was <laughs> vice versa, so we were. Uh, I want our money back. We were tough on each other. They we'll put it us. <laughs> but, but I thought it ended up being a very good audit, and they pointed out some ways that we could improve our management and, and we've, um, as you'll see as we go through here, I think there was a lot of agreement on how we were going to move forward and I and, uh, feel pretty um, happy with the results here, but I'll Great. turn it over to them. At that. Okay, Mr. Freiberger. All right, thank you very much. Uh, what I'd like to do is to give you an overview of, let's see, the report itself. I believe you have a copy of that. And this is not moving. What I'd like to do is give you an overview of how the report is structured. The format is very, very similar to previous internal audit reports that we shared with the commissioners. Uh, in that, uh, you'll see that there's a section one that gives background information. So we give you an overview of the, the size of the unit that's being examined. We did review the fleet management operations, which comes under the purview of public works, although there are other departments that were involved as well. We identified some objectives, which I'll, I'll share with you in a few moments. We described the audit scope itself and the procedures and the summary of work. That is all in the first section. The second section is called detailed observations and recommendations. That's where we get into a little bit more detail of the findings of the audit itself. Now, one big distinction here between this audit and from the previous audit reports we would have issued to the commissioners for your review, and Mr. Shreve hinted at it, was that there was a lot of discussion during the course of the audit, which meant that when we delivered this report, the sec second segment of this did include management action plans. We reviewed those, had discussions of those, and you'll notice that we've indicated here that we do concur with the action plans. So through all those meetings and discussions and so forth, we did come to an understanding as to what were we recommending going forward and what was management going to do to address the issue. So a little bit different twist there, if you will. Um, on the executive summary in the background, one of the things I wanted to share with you is the fact that um, public works was in fact the primary department, the primary area, if you will, that was uh, subjected to the audit, but there are other areas within the county government that we examined as it relates to the fleet management. Those others were the accounting division because they are responsible for um, making sure that there's appropriate insurance on the vehicles and that disposals of any um, vehicles would be handled appropriately as well. And then the safety office was another area that we involved in the audit because we thought that there were some appropriate topics that they were responsible for, again, as it relates to fleet management. So um, that's a little bit different approach, if you will, in that typically we do look at one department, see how their operations are, are functioning and how they're managing the, the area. Uh, but in this case, we did have some other topics that we touched on with other, other divisions as well. The objectives, we listed eight objectives in the report. Um, you can see those uh, outlined for you on pages two and three. At the bottom of page three, there you'll see that there's a whole series of uh, air, uh, topics and documents and so forth that we would have examined. As with most audits, our approach is to do several different things, one of which is to interview managers, interview those who are directly involved in, in this instance, in fleet management and the operations of it. Uh, we also would observe, we observed certain activities taking place. And then the third uh, <coughs> technique, if you will, was to review certain reports, documents, uh, supporting information as far as any transactions that would be applicable to fleet management was concerned. So there's inquiry, observation, and examination of, of uh, a whole series of reports and information. 
that's summarized for you on the top of page four under summary of work. So the very beginning of that is where I've, we've described our, our approach and our summary there. What you'll notice on the bottom of page four are uh, very brief statements, if you will, of our findings as they pertain to uh, Department of Public Works and also with the safety office. There were five that were related to directly to public works. Uh, the first dealt with uh, the daily vehicle inspection report forms not always being completed for non-routine maintenance. Um, second, formal policies and procedures did not exist for certain key processes and there was not a regular review being performed of policies and procedures on a, on a periodic basis. Third, preventive maintenance wasn't always being performed in accordance with policy. Fourth, there was no indication that annual Department of Transportation inspections were performed for all the county vehicles. And the fifth one was uh, vehicle evaluation forms not being consistently completed for replacement vehicles. And then as it relates to safety office, there were three comments that we had. Uh, the first finding was defensive driving records were either missing or were older than a five year period. Uh, the next one, the monitoring of MVA violations, traffic violations, if you will, uh, needed to be strengthened. And the last one dealt with pool vehicle usage and not recording who the employee was that was using a particular vehicle so there would be a degree of accountability. So those are the, the findings that we had. And then at the bottom of page four, we've, you're, you'll see a series of bullets there. Those are topics that we explored and we felt as though those areas were being well managed. We did not have any findings related to each one of those subjects, those being um, issues related to the disbursement of, of fuel, monitoring of fuel, uh, the inventory control process, meaning cycle counts and annual physical inventories. Didn't see any issues with that. Uh, adequate insurance coverage was maintained on the fleet and there was timely addition and removal of vehicles from the insurance policy. So that very quickly is a summary of what we did during the course of the audit and what we found and areas that we thought were, were appropriate were strong. The next segment, and I can go over each one of these uh, findings that we're outlining here in the detailed observations and recommendations section. Here you'll notice um, there's an observation that we've, we've identified in the far left column. We always indicate what we believe the risk is that is associated with that particular observation. We have a recommendation and then on the far right you'll notice that the management team has inserted their action plans and given an indication of when they will be taking action and implementing whatever that action might be. Again, we've noted here, you can see in the bold letters, that we do concur with the management action plan. So uh, all this was fully vetted and discussed with the management team. So we have the observation, the recommendation, then you can see what actions the uh, management team will be taking. This first one um, talks about the daily vehicle inspection report and the forms not being completed for non-routine maintenance. So there is a policy that specifies that those forms are to be filled out whenever there's a uh, non-routine repair that needs to be made. And we did some testing. We had a sample of 50 items that we would have looked at and 30 of them, uh, in 30 instances, we didn't note in the files that there were uh, appropriate forms being completed. Uh, the Second thing that we're identifying in here as well, you'll notice it says additionally we observe that the maintenance process in general is a manually intensive paper-based system. So there are two components there. We were looking for the forms to be completed and in many cases we we're not seeing that they were. And then secondly, it is paper intensive. So our recommendation of course is. Say that again. That the, the process to identify and, and record um, when non-routine repairs need to be made, Thank you. It's, it's very manually intensive and there's paper being dispersed, if you will. And so our suggestion here, of course, is that these, the process be automated and that the, a software package be obtained to uh, automate that process so that it would help with the communication of, of the needs for repairs as well as retaining the information that might be necessary. And in addition to that, what we've suggested is the discontinuance of filling out that form for any of the vehicles that might be 
um, categorized as 10,000 pounds or less. So in the management action plan area, you'll notice that they are in fact going to adopt those, uh, those uh, recommendations. And the research will be done on the software and should be completed by the, by the end of July. So that's the very first finding that we have. If you have any comments or questions about those. I'm just going to wait till the end. Okay. I have a few questions. All right, then the second. Does anybody have a question here at this point? Okay. Okay, we'll move on then to the, the second finding that we have, which is, appears on page eight of this report. And this one describes the fact that formal policies and procedures didn't exist for certain key processes. And also, one of the things that we looked for and tested for was to see that the policies and procedures were being updated to, or reviewed and updated on a periodic basis to make sure that they were in fact current and they were reflecting the right policies and procedures. Um, so we've listed in here examples of some of the topics that were not included. We felt as though they were important. Obviously, vehicle inspection policy, inventory control, vehicle and equipment replacement. Um, the, those were areas, um, those were the ones that needed a formal review. The ones below that, maintenance, safeguarding, and the disbursement and monitoring of gas and fuel, those were topics that were not being addressed in the policy, and we felt as though they were important and needed to be included. So obviously our recommendation here is that all the applicable topics should be included in the policy manuals, and they should be current, and they should be reviewed periodically. And that is, in fact, what the management team has indicated that they would, would be doing. Third finding, uh, preventive maintenance not being performed in accordance with policy. So here again, we examined the files, took a sample of some of the files to see that vehicles were being maintained in accordance with the county policy, and we did identify some that were not being maintained. And we've... Uh, listed some of the uh, examples here of vehicles that were well beyond the 7,500 mile limit, which is the policy level for the county, that those vehicles, that once they reach that level, they should uh, receive some type of a preventive maintenance. And then obviously the risk that we see is there could be a safety issue if the vehicles are, are not properly maintained, oh, and also they may not last as long as they, they could or should if they're not being maintained appropriately. Um, so we have recommendations in here, one of which is to, uh, while managers are already alerted and those who are using vehicles are already alerted that maintenance is necessary, if they don't bring them into the shop to be maintained uh, after a certain period, our suggestion was that the gas usage card um, be shut off in, in effect, meaning the uh, vehicle couldn't be fueled up and used by whoever it is that's being assigned to that vehicle. That would be an incentive, if you will, to get them to bring the vehicle in for the appropriate maintenance. Once all that takes place, then the card could be reactivated. Um, and, and there wouldn't be an issue then with, with um, or shouldn't be an issue then with um, vehicles not being maintained in the, in the right time frames. And that is a policy or practice that's going to be implemented by the management team, and it should be implemented by the end of July. Number four, uh, annual Department of Transportation inspections not always being performed. Uh, some of our testing did indicate that some vehicles did not uh, receive the appropriate inspections within the time frame and in accordance with the DOT policies. So uh, we recommend that the, uh, the, in fact, the department do the annual inspections and the inspection checklist be maintained within the vehicle itself. Number five, vehicle evaluation forms not completed for replacement vehicles. Uh, there is a policy, company pol or corporate, uh, county policy rather, that indicates that all replacement vehicles and equipment requests must be submitted by way of completing a replacement vehicle form. And we identified in instances where that was not being uh, handled uh, appropriately and being done um, in a timely fashion. So um, our recommendation is that all the, all the vehicle requests received be in accordance with policy and a full inspection be performed and all maintenance records reviewed. 
uh, undocumented used in the appropriate forms. That practice actually was um, addressed while we were doing the audit itself. So that one is, is moving ahead. Item number six, this one pertains to defensive driving records. And in some cases, we didn't see that the uh, files were indicating that all the individuals that were using vehicles did in fact uh, indicate that the employees had gone through the defensive driving uh, plan, and in other instances, there were some individuals that were indicated in the records that looked to be well beyond when they initially took those uh, tests and, and were up for renewal and due dates. And so, uh, in some respects, I think some of this may be documentation issues, and I can think you can see that by way of uh, the management action plan, in that the spreadsheets and the records that were being maintained may not have been kept up to date. Uh, but that will be going forward. Item seven, this, this relates to the monitoring of, of traffic violations, if you will, and Maryland does have a system in place in which they can automatic, the state can automatically notify the county if there are traffic citations uh, and alert the county that one of the employees may have had a citation and at one point, the county did not have that automated system in place and was relying upon self-reporting by way of the employees. That has since changed, but there was a period in which that automated process wasn't, uh, wasn't fully implemented and taking place. So obviously our recommendation is that that be in place and then be reviewed and monitored so that if there are violations that are noted, uh, that the appropriate county officials can take some action there. In addition to that, there may be employees that live outside of Maryland, so we would suggest that those that live, for instance, in Virginia, that they would, at least on an annual basis, notify the county if there are any, any vi traffic violations on their part. And then the last comment that we had uh, talks about pool vehicle usage and not being tracked by individual user. And what we mean here is that while there is a record of a, a vehicle being used by a county employee, the record does not indicate who it is that's using it at any given point. So a modification to the records, if you will, we believe would be in order there. And very quickly, that's a summary of, of our report and the eight specific findings that we had during the, this particular audit. Thank you, Ms. Mr. Freeberger. Is there more? Did you have more? No, that's okay. it. Um, okay. No, I just have a couple <laughs> questions. Um, okay, let me just go back to the beginning here. I'm really confused. You never mentioned our GPS program. I'm sorry, did, we didn't mention what program? The GPS system and how that's operating, and that's such, a, such an important part of this, and probably would even eliminate some of these recommendations. Did you? We did not include the GPS system within the scope of this particular audit. But doesn't that have everything to do with fleet management? Well, I think the primary issues that we were looking at was uh, preventive maintenance and uh, maintenance of the vehicles themselves. Um, well, certainly mileage, where people are driving, what their um, mm -hmm. traffic violations, which would include speeding, um, gasoline usage. Uh, I just can't imagine doing a, and no offense, because I'm thinking maybe we didn't tell you that, but it seems implausible to me that one could do a fleet management audit without reviewing what's going on with our GPS system because to buy, I wouldn't, I would think that some of the software that's being recommended might even be, we could do this through our GPS, mm -hmm. which has the ability to do all kinds of exciting things, I'm mm -hmm, told. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to say other than we did not include the GPS uh, system in the process within the course of the audit itself. Okay, that sort of says it all. Thank yeah. you. Were you aware that the GPS system wasn't working for over a year? Wasn't being used? I was not, no. Okay. Thank you, but thank you for what you have provided to us. Okay, thank you.
Okay.